Have you ever wondered why am I here? What is the purpose for me being on this planet? Well, if you have wondered that, you are not alone. Most of us do question that. We are in a three-week series of purpose, why we are here. And the last two weeks, I've looked over two other scriptures. One is Colossians 1, 16, 15, and 16. Last week, we looked at Ecclesi Ecclesiastes 3, 1. And today, we're going to be looking at Ephesians 3, 20 as we close up on this series of why we are here, our purpose on this planet. Join me. So let's look at Ephesians 3.20. I've written it down in my journal. It's something I like to do during my quiet time. I highly recommend it. If Even if you're not a journal person, there's something about writing the scripture down. Um, that just, for me, it just goes farther down for me. But Ephesians 3.20 says, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to the power that is working in us to him be the glory. So I went a little bit into 321. I'm not looking at the whole context here. I'm just focusing on this one scripture, thinking about purpose. What is our purpose on this planet? And Ephesians 3.20 says to him who is able to do more. So as, as we're praying about our purpose, as we're praying about our dream and our call that we feel like we've been called to do, but it's just not happening. Um, now, can I just say, let, let me read this again because it gives us a clue to what to do. To him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. Now, yep, did you hear that? Have you asked? Have you talked to him about it? And you probably go, yeah, I ask him all the time. Um, we have great examples in scripture. I think about Abraham. And how many times did Abraham meet with God and say, Oh, sovereign God, you've given me this dream and this vision. And you told me I'm going to be a father of great nations, but I don't have a child yet. How's that going to happen? Oh, sovereign God. So Abraham is a great example of going to God, going back to God. Lord, this is in my heart. How's it going to happen? It's in my heart. What's it going to look like? Asking him, think about it. Abraham was how old when he had um, Isaac? How old was Sarah? She was 90. I think Abraham was 100. They were old. They were past the ability to do what it looked like they could do. And sometimes, my friends, if things aren't happening for you like you want them to happen, can you, can you just trust him in that? Trust him that really our hearts are more important to him than anything else. Trust him that his timing is perfect, and that's what we looked at um, last week, Ecclesiastes 3 1. There's a time for everything. But also, just go to him. As, maybe, he's, maybe he's just trying to get us out of the way, get us where we don't try to do it on our own, so that he can do it for us, so we can see his power. Because it says that he can do immeasurably, and that word immeasurably, I looked it up in the Greek. It's parisos, and it means abundantly, it means superior. Oh man, God's ways are so much better than ours, right? So we can go to him, and we need to go to him, and we need to ask him. This is about a relationship and talking with the Father over and over, but then just trusting him. Giving him, and that's another thing I like about journals and journaling is you can write it down, you can close it and set it aside, and God has it. He has what you, what your heart has has been inked on the page. So to Him who can do measurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to His power, not our power. It's not going to be about how 
great we are, how beautiful we are, how smart we are, how well we speak, or whatever, fill in that blank. It's not going to be about us. It's going to be about His ability, His power. To Him, according to His power that is working in us, y'all, to Him be the glory. To Him be the glory. That is the key. So you're wondering about purpose, and you're wondering about why you're on this planet. I'm going to give you the three things I've been talking about, but I hope you, if you didn't catch the first two um, videos, that you'll go back and listen to them. But Colossians 1.16 says that we are on this planet to bring Him pleasure, that we have been created by Jesus to bring Him pleasure. That's your number one purpose. Did you know it? <laughs> it's not about you or me. It's about Jesus, and it's about bringing Him pleasure. And I love that you bring Him pleasure. I bring Him pleasure just like a little kid. Ecclesiastes 3.1 was, there's a time for everything. Be patient. Wait. Live in this season you're in. And um, my suggestion was to you is be thankful. Live a life of thankfulness in those seasons where you are because there's a purpose for every season that you are in. And it's coming. That season you've been dreaming about, that purpose, that calling, that it's coming. It may not look like you think it's going to look, but it's coming because there's a season for everything. And then that brings us to today that this is all our purpose is to bring Him glory. And, and God may have to do some real work on our hearts to get there because we are so human and I am so human and I don't want to take any of the glory. I want it all to go to King Jesus. So how do we work on that? And as I talked about being thankful last week, I think this week the key is worship. It's about His glory, right? It's our purpose is about bringing Him glory. So spend time in worship. We always think about worshiping as singing and music. And, and yes, that is worship. And I would encourage you not just to listen to the music, but to sing it out loud. Even if you can't sing worth a hoot, get in your car and, and sing it out loud. Get in the shower and sing it out loud. Where nobody can hear you if you don't want anybody to hear you. But use your voice. But also another way of worship is studying the Word of God. That is a form of worship. So I want to encourage you as you're waiting on your purpose, as you are maybe even walking out your purpose and it's not going like you thought it would or it's not filling you up like you thought it would, you know what? He alone is the one that fills us up and He's not going to let anything else take, take His place because He loves you so much. Hold my hands. Let me pray you up. Thank you, Father, for this word that we were created for your purposes. We were created to bring you pleasure. We were created for purposes, for seasons, for different times. And Lord, thank you that you can do more, abundantly more, exceedingly more, beyond measure of anything we could ask. Um, you to do. So, Lord, we do come to you in prayer. We want to say, Lord, we want to live to bring you pleasure. We want to live for your glory, that you be glorified in our purposes and everything we do. Lord, work on our hearts and let our lives shine for Jesus. It's in your name we pray. In all of his children said, Amen. Thank you so much for joining me in this final series of living on purpose and with purpose go to wordsbyandylee.com and you can find out more read more articles get more printables subscribe leave a comment i would love to hear your thoughts on this and how i could be praying for you and anything you might be interested in studying y'all have a great week go out there and live abundantly as you live on purpose <laughs>